bonsoir, bonsoir Franck, bonsoir Thomas, we're starting with um, one of my absolute favorite records from last year, <laughs> yeah, 2022. What am I talking about? Why am I referencing last year? Well, because it takes some time some to... It sometimes <laughs> takes some time to reach the good... I've never talked about that artist, never talked about that record. And that was um, the last record I was waiting for from last year before I eventually, ultimately, do a best of 2022 video. I know I um, owe some of you a best of 2021. <laughs> it's coming as well. Enjoy. Hello Johan, hello John. I almost died today. <laughs> no, I'm not, I, I shouldn't joke about it, but um, one of my record shelves collapsed on me. It's alright, you know, there's uh, minimum damage apart from um, new shelves uh, that needs to be made now, but yeah. Not the shelves in the studio, as you'll see. Man, I'm not sure I've seen you before, so welcome. Hello, Stefan. Yeah, I'll show the record in a while. shortly, as I usually do. Hello, Record Hound. <laughs> I'm alive, so of course it's manageable. <laughs> I just have to build new ones. Hello, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Hello, 808. Salut, Marcos. Hello, Johnny Twit. Mon ami Dom. I'm glad I was shared uh, the screen with you today a little bit. Diegler, Diegler Dirk. Good evening. Salut Florian. Florian, des Landes. Salut l'ami. Yes, it was. And it became even <laughs> more crazy.
<laughs> no, no record made the shelf collapse. It's the, it's a tiny shelf beside the shelf where I have books. I had the amazing idea to move and to do something, and uh, it was kind of. Uh, I didn't realize how much both shelves depended on each other. Uh, there's a few that were a bit bummed, but I don't. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out tomorrow. It's a bit of a shame, but what can I do? <laughs> no, it's not even that one. <laughs> Hello, I know garden. Good evening to you. Hello, Nick. Nice to see you. Hello, Ryan, my man. <laughs> okay, not my man, finally. Salut, Chance. The record I'm playing now was released last year. It was sold out almost immediately, but... Um, and there's a repress that just uh, that arrived uh, recently. Listening to Time Warp on the ever excellent Leaving Records Spiral World. Time Warp with a twist. We were listening to No Furniture Tanaga. Even nipples on the t shirt, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> so, this is the second album, I believe, of uh, Time War. Um, the first one was not to my taste. This one, even if not like a complete perfection, there's a couple of tracks I, I don't care for on this one, but there's yeah, there's at least five, six really, really strong tracks on this. And he, I think it came out in like October or November, something like that. So it took a little while to reach me. And um, really one of the most enjoyable records of last year, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think there's any copies available on Discogs. I might be wrong. Um, but the record is available on the band camp of the, um, of the band. And maybe even on Juno. Who knows? <laughs> You'll know if you're interested.
the two wheels. Oh, Arkansas. Nice. I hope. Right above Lu uh, Louisiana, right? Most indeed. Only correct to point that out this way. But it's not. This is... Julius Caesar, uh, Julius Eastman. <laughs> uh, yeah, Julius Caesar. This came out uh, recently on Weekend Records. Really, really good label. Stay on it is the name of the composition, which is the repetitiveness is a testimony to his closeness to yeah the minimal minimalist scene of New York, which he was part of in so many ways, as I believe that um, um, Arthur Russell is uh, featured on this composition. Arthur Russell, who started out uh, in the minimalist scene, but quickly evolved into his own brand of pop, disco, eccentricities. And it took me a little while to get into Julius Eastman. Uh, I guess I didn't hear first the, um, his compositions that I really liked. And he's getting, in the past five years, a uh, resurgence as he was more or less a forgotten modern composer. He died of AIDS, if I remember correctly, and mostly misunderstood. But a lot of musicians really enjoyed performing his music. And most of these releases, these new releases, are new recordings of his written music. And most of it was possible because of the love of the musicians for his oeuvre. I'm not in love with all the releases, um, but I got the box set I showed uh, a few weeks ago that was a compilation of two previous LPs uh, on, coming uh, on Bloom, and this one, I'm really, uh, I'm only listening to it for the second time. The, the, the second side is less repetitive, but I love this. Hello, Vinyl Dreamscape. Ooh. Yeah, it cooled down here a little bit, thankfully. <laughs> oh, there was a Bowery Electric reissue? Of which one? It's the ratio of this. <laughs> Absolutely must have album. Maybe I'll play you a little bit of it later. I haven't listened to that one. Wait, wait. Hello, Frank. I don't think he played this because it only came out on vinyl now. So he played maybe a YouTube of it. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. The EPs with the remixes? Yeah. Oh, the first the one that is more like rock. Hello, Dubs. Hello, Michael. So tonight will be, well, I guess I say it all the time, but it will be quite special for me. As I'm going to play a, a grail for me. Like a crazy grail. 
Thank you, Thomas, for leaving a very nice uh, tip already in the coffee jar in the description of the video. The first link if you want to support the channel. That is always very useful. And thanks Ryan for his monthly subscribe subscription to the coffee, uh, to my coffee page. Yeah, hello Ed, nice to see you. I'm pretty sure it was only pressed uh, uh, this year, uh, Alex, but there was, um, I think I remember also me and um, Fred talking about it, uh, and he played a YouTube link of it, because it, I think it got quite delayed, the pressing of this. <laughs> and we had a nice little discussion with uh, Thomas, from uh, vinyl.eu on uh, Michael 45's uh, stream of the day. Yeah, I thought it would be a good match. I, I told uh, Michael that uh, maybe we could talk about a little bit about F -E -M WFMU. But I, I couldn't come on from the start because of my shelf <laughs> shelving issue. Feminine, what, what is that one again? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, names. So now I'm playing one of um, the records I got recently that I think I uh, talked about it, I showed it. But that was one of my absolute like, high. Like, I update my want list all the time, of course, and um, I reevaluate re priorities. And as you guys know, I'm on a on a as most uh, rabbit hole craves. And the two more elusive ones, the more difficult to find. Um, I had to really trick, like go deep into my um, digging uh, techniques to, to find it. And this is a record that he claims is not him. Mertilde. Von Leusch, our U Virnitz, Rungholter Tanz, Erstes Buch. With a sort of semi Nursuzun list from Asmus Titchen himself, it's not very really clear. This is from the early 90s, I think it's from 1990.
One of the benefits of my shelves um, failing me today by collapsing is that I picked up a few records that I wouldn't have otherwise that I think would be fun. But it will be, yeah, there's a few records I'm, I'm about to play that are quite... Uh, I'm so happy. One record I haven't even played yet, I'm going to discover it with you guys. Bonsoir, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, who was with us uh, during uh, Michael's stream earlier. Good Kvel. Absolute. Ah, okay. Yeah, the other one. Yeah, I get it. You know, I remember when that Bowery electric record came out. Yeah, I guess I'll play it after that. It was so funny because it really was like the meeting of both my Billy Valentine and Scorn with the dub, the ambient dub aspect of things. Well, that's how we, that's how we took it back then, 30 years ago now. No, 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 that, that's not 20 year for anniversary. It's 30, right? Okay, 23 year, 26. Maybe I'm missing something you guys are saying. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Steve uh, is correct. There is one for sale on Discogs, but it's only the cover. I had to contact many people and convince someone who had it to trade it for something else I had. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll play some, uh, I have still some more, yeah. Hello, Jesper. Leheisan. Yeah, and behave, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you you gotta be a little bit philosophical about it. <laughs> He's a new friend of us, Ryan. I've been ordering records for from him on Discord for a long, long time. But I didn't connect the dots. Utopia, the Utopia Strong from our friend uh, Steve Davis. Huh? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, on my uh, record it says uh, 1997, but I think I bought the CD on, in 1996. Yeah, they're fucking, uh, they're, they're really not nice. Believe me, I've tried for years, uh, but the, the few people who have it for sale at these prices, they're not, they don't belch, but. Bonsoir, David. Thank you, thank you, Rachel. 
yeah, that happened to Alex in a quite painful way uh, uh, as well, I think. Wow! Someone uh, supported uh, um, the channel anonymous, anonymous, anonymously. Um, in a very generous way. And the Vinyl Dreamscape, our own shown also. Thank you guys, you, you're the best. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if, if anyone wants to support the channel, there's the link in the, the Kofi, the, the Kofi link in the description. Thank you guys. Let me see. Yeah, Anonymous. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Fred. Freddy Dobbs, much appreciated. So this is this record we've been talking about in the Looping um, Gallery. So Bowery Electric, second album. The first one is more shoegaze, psychedelic rock. It's good. But it's not that original, in my opinion. This one, when this came out, this kind of drums, there was nothing like that. Really, really inspiring album. With a bunch of EPs with crazy remixes that came out around then. I played one um, some months ago, I believe last year, that uh, a few of you went quite crazy for, the Witchman remix, if I remember correctly. Hey son, Oak and Shield. We might play some uh, ethnographical music for you tonight, huh? <laughs> Hello Rev, I hope today is treating you decently. Hello Easy Now. Uh, the shelf that came down is the one in the main house where I keep the modern classical and, and jazz, unfortunately. There's a lot here as well, but uh, it's the one where I have only that. It's not mixed with anything else. This one is the shelf where I, the stuff that is here um, that I'm like filing, it's going to that shelf. Even if I have a turntable there as well. Oh, nice, uh, Florian. Uh, get in touch with me on the on Instagram, and uh, if I can, I'll show you around. And if I can't, I'll I'll direct you around. No, thank you, Rev, for being here. Yeah, that record from uh, Asmus Titchens uh, under the Mechthild von Leusch alias. I, um, I showed and mentioned it on Michael's stream law two Fridays ago with Günther and Nadine, I believe. Or maybe it was last week. Oh, and by the way, I'll probably do another video tomorrow, like a regular one, as I finally found the record I was missing to do um, my take of my own personal take of the current uh, Fred, uh, your 10 most listened records. I know some will hate me to do that, but trust me, it will be fun and unexpected. And honest. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's like the Pokemons, huh? Sean. Yeah, no problem.
Uh, I wish I had today, but yeah, I, I need one. Get in touch with me sometime, Oaken Shield. Maybe if we're not too far away from each other in Sweden. Sweden is a bigger country than most people realize, so... <laughs> Hello, Jeffrey. Nice to see you. Oh, I have a very strange Monzarek record. Ah, I, if I could find it, I think you guys would be happy. I'll, I'll look for it and, uh, for next week. So yeah, this is this is um, Bowery Electric, who had a third album that is completely bullshit in my opinion. Um, very boring, like. Uh, a very, I don't know, they signed to, who did they sign to? Not. It was not on Cranky, I think. I think it was on Beggar's Banquet or something. Maybe it was still on Cranky, I'm not sure. I have the EP of it that is all right. See, these drums, that's like Scorn, Evanescence. Or the bass that is coming on this track. <laughs> if you're into bass in rock and roll and dub. Scab is a good Indian band from New York. And yeah, that was a fun uh, little stream that Rev gave us during the week. Yeah, I thought so. And what do you think? But do you agree that the third one is like, eh? Let's not even go there. Yeah, it, it is infectious. And to be honest, I waited to talk about them openly when I finally managed to get all the ones I wanted so the wounds uh, Nick what are you talking uh, about are you trying to pull uh, a Harry here if you are tell me so <laughs> let us know in the comments Yeah, there's an EP. Of this, the third album, Freedom Fighters, but it's this is the only decent song and it's not great. But in between these two, there is this EP that was released on um, Happy Go Lucky. I believe that is maybe their own label. And this one is, I haven't listened to it in a long time, but I remember it was, I liked it enough. Um, just bruises. It was, thankfully, uh, if you look at Michael's um, stream, you can see some of the result of that. And um, it was more scary when I heard the wood crack. I was, is it me or is it uh, the shell? Both are scary. Oh, Lush Life, that's the name of the one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> less stepchildren, or it's not even like a stepchild, it's more like a, a German uh, cousin. 
And it, uh, I'll see more of the damage tomorrow, but I only saw like two or three that had like some really annoying damage to the sleeves. Portion the records seemed okay, but I'll see more tomorrow. Concrete research. Uh, what are you talking about? Music concrete and uh, <laughs> I think I know. Uh, like I think I know. There's a reason why you use these words for something more specific, but I'm not sure right now. <laughs> hey, cool. Nice to see you. want to support the stream, Nick, you can always leave a little tip in the Kofi link, uh, Kofi drawer in the description of, uh, of the video. During um, the stream we shared with Michael and Thomas earlier, Thomas uh, showed us uh, a signed album of Nina Simone and a good one. And uh, Michael was teasing me a little bit about it. And when I was, um, after that, when I was just sorting some of the records that fell from the shelf, I saw my, um, the second jazz record I deeply felt in love with, this one. My uh, favorite al album uh, from that artist on a French label, the amazing Futura. And signed by the artist, but signed to me. This is Pop Vine by Ted Pearson, who signed it to me in 2005 at a gig in Paris. Really, really good. With the Georges Arvanitas trio. During that live, it was kind of a legacy in a small club in Paris. And uh, he did three sets of 30 minutes or so and by the second one he was asking the audience uh, what we wanted to, uh, him to play and he fully accept, expected people to only ask him for modern pop modern, modern yeah modern uh, post pop modern jazz and me and another guy who I know we went like no play some free jazz and he was laughing, and, and he did it. <laughs> so that was pretty amazing. This used to be an expensive record. Then it was kind of affordable. Nowadays, I have no idea. On which one? Uh, on, um, on the Bau which Bowery Electric? Or uh, is it uh, on uh, Telectu? Yeah. Mm. 
It is, huh? <laughs> no one should uh, feel obligated, but if you like it and you can afford it, thank you guys. <laughs> he didn't. Oh! <laughs> Uh, you agree, it's the best curve sound by far. This track is called uh, LSD something. LSD takes a holiday. Uh. And it's a monster track, as you can see. The Jean Jarvanistas trio is a French trio of jazz musicians that usually are kind of uh, funky soulful jazz from the 60s in France, but really amazing. This is probably them at the most crazy. And it's still very cool. As you can hear the bass line that goes free, but also well, somewhat funky. I don't know Vibrasonic. I have no idea. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Ah, yeah, got you. There you go. You can probably find it for an, at a very affordable price. But look up the original just in case it's affordable on uh, on Discord. Oh, I, I had I I didn't notice. I saw the movie, but uh, or did I? Gotcha. <laughs> well, it, it will be more than that tonight. Yeah, this is... Uh, now I discovered so much more jazz since... Uh, I bought this in 2002, 21 years ago. But still, uh, I, I think of it less because it was on the shelf. So I, I didn't... That's because the shelf collapsed that I'm playing it tonight. But... Um, yeah, it could easily be in my top 10 favorite jazz records. And thank you, Frank, for leaving a little tip in the coffee jar. <laughs> Much appreciated, guys. Jordan Vanitas is the, the piano player, by the way. <coughs> There's a double LP of his on Futura as well that has never gotten reissued. That is more like funky jazz. I didn't like it when I first discovered it like 20 plus years ago. But now I think it's a good record. It's just I don't feel the need to have it. Even if they're great musicians and it's a great record. Yeah, when Enric Dolphy died, um, I think he was the first to do a homage to him, uh, the tears for Eric Dolphy. 
that your son album really moving very different from that but uh, still a, 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 a good jazz uh, recording absolutely yeah how much do they go for it Sylvain or Chris? Sylvain, yeah. I think uh, the last minute is Sylvain. I'm so bad with names sometimes. If you release a record I have here, I'll remember your name. If I meet you 10 times, I might not. <laughs> I will remember you, but uh, maybe not your first name. Nah, there's tons of people who love that movie called. Come on. It's a cult movie. Was it what it was called, Ed, or are you, are you having a go at me now, huh? Drums, Charles Saudray, and on bass, Jackie Samson. They played on a, some other records, but they were really, pay, um, how do you say it? Faithful to Ted Curson. Uh, to Georgia Arvanitas, sorry. Hello, Christopher. Yeah, Jackie Samson. sense <laughs> I think I knew that now that you but yeah sometime I will get really into uh, Zappa I have two records of his I picked up because I found them cheap I have never really so I, I, I have friends who are crazy Zappa fans and I did for like two years I think uh, these um, episodic or at least a good year um, episodic um, streams with uh, a friend um, from Chicago, huh? uh, every week, a year. He might be popping up uh, tonight, one of the gun calls. Huh? Uh, and he's the biggest, uh, one of the biggest Zappa fans out uh, there in the VC community with um, Jim. Jim Record Collector News. Declared one at least. Yeah, that was an amazing record. On uh, um, not on black editions, but yeah, the, um, Thomas. Oh, 
the new record. Honor, honor. HBK Volume 2. It's the second um, track uh, album by Honor, oh which was a mixtape original. I just got it. So this artist is quite mysterious. I know very little about him. Her. The first album that came out last year or two years ago was old. It was interesting and this one is too a, li a little more interesting to me but i'm still discovering it it's kind of like a i don't know how to qualify that it's sort of yeah how would you guys describe this this is a kind of like a is it trap music <laughs> a little bit hello Liam. But yes, I, I guess you could say this is like modern left field pop music. Not necessarily with uh, lyrics and traditional pop music, but still. Absolutely. It's obviously, in a way, referencing it. How couldn't it? Hello Angela, nice to see you tonight. There is a sort of hypnagogic quality to this music, like nostalgia, something reminding us of the 80s or a 
fetishized the 80s through Hollywood and also something modern which makes it for quite maybe timeless who knows time will tell Back to jazz or it could be jazz and it could be the same record I was just playing. There you go. Oops. Not Hassel, Ed, but of course it would remind us of John, uh, our best departed pal, John Hassel, and him, his fourth world. Who might that be? Who is a great, obvious lover of John Hassel and a great musician that is currently quite productive? I played a record of his last week. Sorry for my pronunciation today. Uh, I've been speaking so much today already that uh, me speaking English, I'm a little, you know, the, the more tired I get, the, the worse my English gets, of course. <laughs> so absolutely don't hesitate to ask me to precise titles if, I, if you can't make it out when I'm telling it or showing it. So this is our favorite. Sam Gendel, Passive Music, what a good name, Passive Music. Sam Gendel, one of the most amazing musicians currently operating between jazz, electronic music, ambient, improv, and um, this is a record that was originally released, I think, on CD or cassette uh, a few years ago, and it was um, just issued now on vinyl. Um, there's two press, two. Th there's one black vinyl, I think, and the one I showed, which is transparent black. And um, I think they did. You can still find it on the, his band camp and uh, on some shops. But they they stated that this would be the last pressing of this on vinyl. And this is one of the really good ones. I'm always interested by any records of um, Sam Gendel, but um, I'm also not getting every single one. And, and this one with the Superstore is uh, probably one of my two favorite ones. Oh, 
Oh, you got them. Did they get reissued or did you dig deep, Steve? Oh, I have some uh, Francois Tusque uh, that, that might be fun to play sometime. Yeah, e exactly. But more like uh, it's not really smoky because it goes uh, like the whole uh, record is quite homogeneous. But yeah, for me it's uh, it's one of his uh, really good ones. I understand that you would go more for uh, for these uh, Dom, but ultimately these these are great. Um, but these I, I like to listen to him solo like that. And um, playing various instruments because he plays all the instruments. So here we hear him on on the trom trumpet and uh, clarinet sometimes. But he also plays the guitar. He also plays oh, this and obviously electronics. Yeah. Uh, I think we would align pretty well there. <laughs> blue, blue, yeah, it's it's um it's one of uh, it's a great one. I haven't fallen in love with it yet, Christopher. Um, I, I talked about it with Michael, and I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit too obvious for me so far, but. I still have high hopes for that one. <laughs> yeah, the guitar, true. But really, my favorite one is the one that, on the paper, is the least interesting one, Superstar, as it's only very, very short tracks, like almost like a boring library record with two short tracks. and. For some reason, it's the one uh, that really talked to me the most because of the amount of ideas and how how efficient he is to to showcase an idea in so little time in in thrilling ways. Yeah, this is like a, totally like a John Hassel track, but with yeah, with some electronics. Forgotten this, and it was sealed. I had two copies of it, and I, I recently gifted uh, my other one. Shit, that, that is scary. I hope it's good inside.
my thoughts exactly. So yeah, last week I played um, a record, maybe two, of uh, Barry Truax, the inventor of uh, granular synthesis. And um, or was it last week or two weeks ago? I'm not sure. And uh, he has three LPs, and this is the third one. And probably the most, yeah, the ones with the hits. So this is avant-garde modern classical electronic music, experimental music in the truest sense, electroacoustic and computer music. I assume this is still very easy to find cheap online, which is crazy. I guess it's only due to people totally ignoring him. Barry Truax is um, probably one of the really most underrated music musicians in the avant-garde of the 20th century in my opinion but really it's quite an educated opinion i hope to uh, to say his contribution to to synthesis is unparalleled and um and this record well i hope you will enjoy it as much as i do Granular synthesis has a few parallels, parallel ideas with um, spectral music, which is when two sounds from two different instruments starts to to meet and merge to the point that you don't really know which one it is which one uh, after a while. But it's also narrative, so it's. This happens in a linear fashion, but not always. Oh no, I do listen to R&B, soul, funk, uh, hip hop. I play some every every time I find something really striking, like uh, last year, uh, the album by um, uh, Contour. Contour. I, I still listen to this every week, almost. And uh, yeah, I'll play it again. <laughs> Serpent with feet also is a big, big favorite in this house. There is a lot, but he, Barry Truax, Thomas, I think is within the males, because if you go to the females, it's easy. Like you can talk about Christine Gru for hours. No one knows her outside of a, a few French academics. And her contribution is absolutely astounding, but unfortunately only on CD. And a lot of her work has never been re released. Ryan, please don't send me any American football paraphernalia. <laughs> it costs you way too much in uh, shipping to send me these, uh, all these things that you hope to convert me to becoming an American. <laughs> I love you. Oh, this one, Florian? Ah, good choice. See? I love uh, when you guys uh, when, uh, go further, like do homework instantly. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Actually, no, but I wouldn't mind that, to be honest. Yeah, I should tell uh, Steve Davis to get this one in before uh, all copies get uh, sold. Let's see about it. All right, so still very affordable on this box, but only five copies. Uh, Canada, France, and there's one in the US, but that one is quite expensive, but still cheap considering the quality of the music. But there's two mint copies sealed like mine uh, in Canada for quite a decent price and one DG plus yeah. <laughs> I see two copies of this sold since I, I mentioned it since I mentioned all the records by this guy. Absolutely. Already the cover shows you that this is interesting. This is pretty rad. On Cambridge Street Records. I'll jump onto the next track quickly. Because all the tracks are quite different from each other on this one. Still very much Barry Truax music. <laughs> oh my god, I should have subconsciously ask you for a uh... Yeah, um, I'll try to do that, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> oh my god, Ryan is a good guy, really good guy, and he has a good sense of humor. This is computer generated sounds, by the way. This is not acoustic. Actually, it's not completely true. There is some marimba on this that is being treated electronically live. The previous track was the same, but with the recorder, which is a sort of flute. Hello, I'm the dead. Hello, still in Iceland, I believe. Huh? Yeah, now you can hear the marimba.
and it's that time of the stream where from my own <laughs> will I, um, I do remind you who are watching this live and after the, the streaming um, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up um, on the YouTube page there if you fancy that that's always here <laughs> helpful and uh, and leave a comment if um, if you haven't uh, if you're not watching this live and if you want to mm, keep the discussion and if you want to support the channel there's always the Kofi link uh, in the description where you can tip your DJ for the night and hello Chris and hello Dave Be careful, Dave. Huh? <laughs> Don't do anything cr too crazy. Next record is uh, a current rabbit hole of mine, and <laughs> maybe I shouldn't talk too much about it already, but it's always good um, if uh, more of us can discuss it quicker. This is really good. Come help, but imagine this on a Stanley Kubrick movie. I remember when I discovered that record, I, I shared it with a bunch of friends in France who, who diggers and private sellers. And uh, that was kind of, I remember when I, um, I uh, kind of like had passed 
in a way that like suddenly like okay I'm part of the of the club <laughs> I see what you mean yeah Florian yeah it, it is kind of it's not widescreen this track for sure yeah the John Carpenter movie but I, I prefer to think of it like the um, what's the name of the other guy the guy who did uh, who wrote Alien and uh, who wrote um, Dead and Buried one of my favorite uh, horror movies of the 80s and a bunch of other stuff that is fun but forgettable like Return of the Living Dead and uh, and uh, he did that uh, Lovecraft movie the Charles Dexter Ward uh, case movie okay. I forget his name now this record from uh, my latest rabbit hole an artist that for years I, i've known of him for over 20 years maybe maybe even 25 years he's one of the big names in broken music experimental music art music this was um this part of a performance that lasted six days six straight days and this is um, a recording of which day <laughs> uh, anyways this is orgies mysteries theater Herman Nietzsche That's six, um, six Tage Spiel. The, the six days play theaters of the mystery orgies. <laughs> Here is Hermann Nietzsche, who died last year. Here is part of a, sh a shot of the orchestra performing the piece. But um, he's an artist, so it's not just a musical performance, it's a total performance. Theater, visuals, painting, sound. And even Schlager at the same time. This was happening during this at the same time. This came with a DVD that I haven't watched yet. Austrian uh, Ed, but uh, I think he at one point he he maybe moved to Sw uh, to Switzerland. I'm not sure. 
And yes, four out, absolutely. Hello, Tracy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is day three of the six day performance. There's a, um, a CD box set of, I think, 21 CDs um, or CD-ROMs that, that, that is the whole performance. There were some breaks, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's 21, but like it's a massive CD box set. John, John Levinson, thank you for leaving a very nice tip in the coffee jar. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I think the difference between um, Hermann Nietzsche and uh, Nurse is that, okay, in a way there is some humor in Hermann Nietzsche because of the total art is also the comedy and um, let's laugh at the, at, at the stuff that makes kids laugh, you know, bodily fluids. He even went to jail because of his art, uh, Hermann Nietzsche. Because it was deemed so offensive, and during some performances, he was arrested in the in the 70s or 60s. I'm not sure. And there was also some some other issues as his fans and all the the musicians and performers. It was at one point perceived as a cult, and. Um, and there were some questionable things happening at times. But I think that there's a sense of humor in, um, in uh, Nurse's Wound. And Nurse's Wound is, even when it's ambient, dark, or whatever, it's never like that. Like, in your face. Like, totally, like... I think Hermanic also had. Which is kind of. Um, yeah, it makes sense. The Holy Mountain by uh, Alejandro Rodowski. I think that the soundtrack to the Holy Mountain just got reissued officially on the Universal. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are some similarities aesthetically. Yes, I'm soon uh, getting an incredible package of him that I can't wait to share with you. I don't like all his records. I, I've listened to almost everything and I have selected the ones I want, some I already have, and um, eventually I will do a, a deep dive into his discography. For the, it's, I know it's still summer and the holidays for some and I know if uh, Niels is um, watching this he's going to Napoli in Italy pretty soon and thanks to our friend Julia who's uh, sometimes watching this live I learned that Napoli has the one and only Hermanich Museum permanent collection Yes, indeed. Don Cherry did the soundtrack to, to that movie. <laughs> yeah, the music is great. It's like 
the whole orchestra managed to almost become a drone. Super intense music for sure. See you later, Dom. But wait, if you can hold, because next record is for you, Dom, and uh, you might want to to be able to order it when it's still possible. You see this Elman Nietzsche record is, um, for me it's a good illustration of uh, what I'm trying to do here. A lot of this music is perceived as difficult music, like, you know, savant, experimental, like you have to be an intellectual to, to understand it. And for me, this is, I always felt it's a little bit unfortunate that the perception is thus. And uh, if there is one goal for this channel, it is that, to, to talk with empathy, joy, and energy about music like that, that might feel far out, antagonistic, um, disconnected from your own culture. Let's see. When I listen to this, now the drum. I just need to to find, you know, playfulness in it. Imagining myself as a kid, not knowing how to play the drums, but still absolutely playing the drums, and probably super bad, but still, after a while. Basically, playing is practicing, so you start to find yourself, find a way, and enjoy yourself. And if that is the way for you to get into this, there's no bad way. If you go into this just purely because of emotions, um, energy, stubbornness, instead of intellectual understanding, of the ideas there, who, who cares? Who cares? And if they, then later you manage to find another layer of enjoyment, even better. I hope you can see it, John. It's like a selected varnish on it, which is quite cool.
Indeed. There's a lot of red in these movies. You're lucky you already tipped the coffee jar, Ryan. Otherwise, that would have been mandatory with that comment. Hello, Amir. Nice to see you. Sometimes he has performances like that that end up with Schlager, which is just perfect. <laughs> exactly, Ed. And this is a beautiful edition on the uh, label uh, Cort uh, Organs of Corti, I believe. Organ of Corti, which issued um, some really cool archival recordings of uh, Terry Riley, including the one uh, with Chet Baker that was unreleased until uh, the label did that. On CD only, unfortunately, but there's a vinyl bootleg. So now we go to the Appalach. So this is for Dom, this is for Elliot Cruz, and whomever is into Americana. This is uh, electronic Appalachian music, which means it's the banjo and um, drums, and uh, electronics, modular electronics. That uh, Hermannish record, I think, still kind of affordable. It's not cheap, but you can still maybe find a copy or two. Uh, but a lot of his records, because he's an artist, they go for hundreds and hundreds of euros or you know, dollars when you can find them. Yeah, and just forget about the fact that it is intellectual music. Just go with your guts, and uh, and that's always good. Noise Extra. I don't know that program, Stefan. I assume it's a TV or program or maybe a podcast. So we're listening to this record. Uh, I think I believe it's the first record from this project. Seal screen uh, jacket. Ozawatome, Mountain Miner. I got this thanks to our friend um, Cesar, who picked it up, and um, I was curious. I asked him more about it. This is by a guy called Zeke Graves, who has done uh, quite a lot of things. Yes, yeah, so no, it's it's leather pressed, not uh, silk screen, which is a similar technique in a way. So these were, I believe, COVID recordings. And there is a connection between this and La Monte Young, obviously, if you know the story of La Monte Young, uh, child, uh, childhood. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> that you do need. Hello, Quint. Indeed, that's 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 what I'm talking about. Exactly. Experimental is another word for exotic. Exotic, external, not from your culture. So uh, 
as soon as you create familiarity, you create kinship, you create culture, and um, there, there's no reason why it wouldn't be easy. Just, it's the same. Just remember the first time you're driving a car. <laughs> All right, I'll look it up, Stefan. So yeah, this is a really nice little record that came out of nowhere. I don't know yet if it's a great record, but I thought I like the concept, I like the sound, and I thought, okay, this is a current artist, I'm going to support it, and maybe there's something exciting about it. Um, I think, yeah, the, the object, the letter print, uh, after, I don't think you can see, but all the, the typing there is like punched into the, the paper. It's really cool. And yeah, I, I really re like records like that. 200 copies as well, I think they only did. Uh, maybe less actually. And uh, Cesar found it to me through the, the shop where the guy actually works. It's uh, in Northern Carolina, I believe. Yeah, a bit. And through that, this I love that you're talking about Hans Joachim Rodelius, one of my favorite musicians ever. So this is the second time I'm playing this. Uh, I haven't played it complete yet. Uh, the record is a little bit... Uh, I don't know if it's depressing that it's a little bit noisy or if it's a little bit dirty. I, I assume it's a little dirty. Um, maybe a little both, but for this music it doesn't bother me at all. This track has, it has doesn't have the banjo like the first one, I believe. Or maybe I missed some of it. <laughs> yeah. Our, this is full of surprises. Hello, Bat. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. We had fun uh, nerding out on uh, Steph, uh, uh, Thomas' uh, record collection. Next, a little jazz record that I really like, but it fell off the shelves. So <laughs> that's how I was reminded it, of it today. Oh, it's crazy how life found, finds its way. I think so too. This for me, he, Cluster and uh, Rodelius are the. Absolute, my absolute number one favorite crowd rock uh, project, artist, band. What do you mean, John?
But obviously, yeah, this is um, there's nods to Terry Riley in this. I was more interested in the tracks that have the um, the banjo that like mix Terry Riley minimalism with Appalachian music. Um, the first track had it more as well. Of course, Ed, who's British, had to go with the most British crowd rock record. <laughs> the most British Rodelius record. Huh? As this is a, also a Brian Eno record. Oh, okay. Uh, John, I believe you can find copies of it. Um, Google it. Because I believe you could find copies of it in a in a record shop in the U.S. Okay, so next record is a jazz record um, with some people we love, and it's not it's again an underrated under the radar record for the most part as maybe things have changed I guess that uh, also a lot of people learning to to <laughs> to hyperlink read discogs better than they used to be to do so maybe I'm off there but yeah cluster the best especially Soviso and uh, and um, and Zugerzeit. The first two ones are great, but they are more experimental, experimental, rather than cluster finding their own voice, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Ben. I'm happy uh, it's talking to you as well. Ozawa Tome, Mountain Miner. Minor, which is probably uh, it has double meaning. Uh, the the tuning, the musical uh, tone, and the mind. This go get Zuckerzeit, Zuckerzeit first. No, don't don't try. Uh, for you, uh, knowing you, um, this uh, Zuckerzeit is the one for you. Because uh, Zuckerzeit is almost, uh, has a couple of songs that are almost like hits. Oh, you do, Nico? Interesting. For me, it's more f the formative red years, and they're very interesting. But um, Konrad Schnitzler was still part of Cluster in the two uh, Cluster with a K. But for me, it's more like experimenting rather than composing, which is fine. I love it as well. It's a great album, for sure, by Harmonia. Ah, how beautiful is this, huh? This is so beautiful.
Yeah, Grosses Wasser is probably... The law, the least essential cluster record. I still have it and I enjoy it, but when uh, Grosses Wasser is out, you're better off with the solo releases by uh, Odelius. What is this, huh? <laughs> Let's break down the instruments we're hearing. Obviously the trumpet, which is soloing and is the main instrument there. The, the cover name of um, this record, a composition by the trumpeteer. Cheers, Jason. Yeah, that... It's not easy. It's alright. It's um, Final Dreamscape. When I have all I have from them, I didn't deem it essential, but if you don't have many records of them, it's a good one. Okay. Okay, Michael. See you soon. <laughs> Good night, Mike. So now we can hear the vibe pretty distinctly. This came out on a French label, but it is, this is uh, an American uh, band, Quintet. There's only one pressing of this from 1977, it's a 74 recording. Oh shit! I, oh! I thought it was under the radar. Uh, my bad. <laughs> okay. Totally my bad. This is Tape Street by Ted Daniel Quintet featuring Ken Jamal on Sun. Sun Records. Par uh, Parisian label. Recorded. At Ornette Comments Artist House, January 26, 1974. Produced by Noah Howard. Featuring Tim Inglis, Jerome Cooper on the, the drums, Ken Jamal Vibes, Richard Daniel, Electric Fender Rhodes, and Ted Daniel, his brother, on Flugelhorn. Yeah, Noah Howard is, um, his compositions are quite difficult, I would say. It's not, this is much easier to get into, I guess. Even if for a jazz record it is, it's quite unusual. That's a good way to describe it.
This is a record I got 20 years ago, probably. And uh, it was a super cheap record back then, but I just saw on Discogs no copies available, and the last one went for 400 euros. There is a CD of it. <laughs> There's three compositions on this, and the three are quite different from each other, but they're all like spiritual free jazz. Because this is a rare record, yeah, I've been playing this track from start to end. I'm sure Alex will love this one. And yeah, I mean, what's not to like it? Everyone should like this. <laughs> Midnight, disco time, huh? Again, you can leave a thumb up to the video, like the video, leave a little tip in the coffee jar if you want to support the channel, if you enjoy tonight's show, if you want you to tip your DJ. This track back in the day, this is from I guess 2011, 2010 maybe. That was that was a banger. It was right when the culture of dance house music, dance culture, was allowing for more lo-fi, grungy industrial sounds. This guy, um, I booked him here in Stockholm, and he stayed here actually in my house. Uh, few days he missed his plane and we hung out together really cool guy Svengeli's ghost from Chicago by way of New York or the other way around on the lies label Long Island Express I don't remember what the S <laughs> stands for. This is for this. This is for uh, 808. This is for Vinyl Dreamscape. For all of you who, who still remember their body. <laughs> for on just about the spiritual, even if it's quite cyclic. Thank you, Bad, for leaving a little tip in the coffee jar. I think I forgot you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Much appreciated. I have a couple of targets this week. I'm um, a little bit 
short on, but uh, maybe after tonight we'll get there. I'll show you, this is amazing, this is Vangelis Ghost's first 12 inch, it's, there's no cover art, it's a generic, but I'll show you this. Yes, Alex, absolutely. So I'll show it when I played it. That's the track I played, Sweet Dreams. Very simple syncopation, but so effective. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. They're quite sinister indeed. And Oran, hope you're good. Oh, or um, Tangerine Dream, I fully agree, Nico. The first album is by far the best, and the three after that are close seconds, and everything after is... Uh, is what it is. Um, you're better than that. <laughs> I know you tested the waters of electronic music, electro, in the 80s. You had this uh, Chris and Cozy record that uh, you offered to give uh, me very generously. It ended up in the poems of uh, the other Michael, the one who shall not be named. But um, I know you, you go there sometimes. But this is house music, like of course, so the devil is in the details. There is lots of stuff happening, but not in the foreground. And the modulation on the bass line. <laughs> You're smiling, that's, that's good. <laughs> MZ, below the belt. I suffered enough today. Yeah, they're great, but really the, the first four. Ooh. That's good. That's a pretty good house track on huh, this. Easy and simple, but also very hypnotic. That bass drum from the 808, it's not too heavy, so good, grounding, yeah, I have uh, quite a few of his solo stuff, oh, there's not that many solo albums, but, um, what's the one with the tropical plants, that one is good, cheap, When 
Lies record started out around 2010. It was kind of a small revolution since it became instantly popular and people were curious about it. And the artist got booked all around the world. And it was the first time since the late 80s we had house music that was that grungy, that um, lo fi in a way, almost industrial. Some of it you had through James T. Cotton, um, hieroglyphic being, and um, uh, yeah, that whole scene. But Lies took it to the next level and industrialized it because they had like one release every other week for years and years. They still have quite a few, but uh, ah, Paradise Garage, now you're, you're getting there. Pinnacles by Edgar Ross, the best. So good. That's one of the. Uh, that's his best record for sure. Now, now I'm gonna play a classical music record that I got quite a, some time ago that I never played. Firstly, because the pressing is not good. It's a private press Italian record. Um, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Here it is, this and anyone. Spengali's ghost. Mark. And we listen to Deep Into Memory. Mars Out of Range is amazing as well. Marathon, I don't remember. Long Island Electrical Systems. Lies. Which is, uh, yeah. Ron Morelli, the boss of that label, um, he now lives in Europe. He lived in France for a long time, maybe he still does. But he's from New York, where this label was born, and he used to work at A1, the, the record store in, uh, in New York. And uh, quite a few employees of A1 released on uh, records on this label. So why am I playing this record? I mean, it's not the worst. Not at all. Um, this is Giuseppe Morocci. From 1978. It's a minimal piano record. Um, I'm I got this because I managed to get a great deal on this record that is extremely rare and a lot of people collect it. But a few, a couple of months ago, I believe, I played this record that uh, was my um, the own Chris, um, birthday present I made to myself. His record from 10 years later, 1988. And this record is amazing. This is one of the most beautiful recordings I know of. Uh, both the sound is amazing, the uh, the mixing, the pressing, and the music is out of this world. This is piano music with drones, minimalism, um, absolutely mesmerizing. As you can maybe see, the the cover was printed, letter pressed, and then some original artwork colors put on it by the the musician who's an artist as well. It is signed by him. This was limited, I don't know to how many copies, but I finally managed to get his third and final LP from 10 years later, 1980, uh, 1998, with also such a homemade jacket. Also on Lynx, the Italian label, also signed by him and uh -huh, where does it say yeah limited to 160 copies for some reason and i heard some of it online which prompted me on a mad quest to find this there's a copy available on discogs but extremely expensive 
and I was almost ready to go crazy on it, but thankfully I've managed to find another copy of it at a more decent price. And now I'm gonna discover it, play it for the very first time with you. So this is now the next record, the same artist, 20 years later, with one record in between 10 years before. piano and computer. I don't know if they put the tracks not in the right order. <laughs> I'll let you know, Daniel. I mean, it's 160 copies only. The guy is also known in the art world, and he made uh, the cover. This is quite different from um, the second LP. The second LP was way more electronic and and um, more minimal in a way. We'll see. <laughs> in a way, it is. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, Colin. Uh, Colon. Nan Karo. This is, I would say, true experimental music in the academic sense. And this is where I'm losing a lot of people, I'm sure, <laughs> but it is what it is. Let's sample it a little bit. For sure, Daniel. It says here, the man and the computer, the computer man. The man creates music using the computer. The sound come out of the piano, from the piano, out from the piano. The sound come out from the computer. Excitability, imagination, rationality, and logic build up the sound. The grammar is a bit uh, sketchy, Italian from the 90s. The humanity is contaminated by the technique. As always, this happened since invention of the instrument. Today also, the soul man play an inanimate instrument for to confirm one's creativity, one's existence, 
Now I use the computer for to play <laughs> because I like the logic of his. Now, on the contrary, I interrupt the mathematical precision of his to make him more natural. Now I use him for my creativity better to develop because the world balance is in the autonomy, not in the logic. Cheers, Ed. I appreciate it. For me, it is the record of, of tonight. Uh, I know it won't be the favorite for everyone, but for me, this was one the, the one I was the most looking forward to playing and, uh, and discovering. Which deserves a little bit. <laughs> Actually, that's it, and hundred and sixty copies exist only of this, so it's worth whatever your desire builds into. Like, I've been after that record for a long, long, long time. And um, after a while, you realize, shit, there's, <laughs> it's um, just impossible to find. So, and the object is cool. The, the story is quite cool. And the music is... My desire grew greatly after I got this one, which is probably easier on the ear than this one. No, not probably, definitely. That would be interesting. I, I don't really understand how uh, Christopher's collection was built and when, but uh, he would love this. No, it is piano, but the computer treats it. This was recorded in, in um, the Parsifal studio in um, Firenze. <laughs> Hello, Bob. Thank you, John. Yeah, I just want to make a zero hierarchy between house music, rap, rock, and this. But I'll play, I'll, I'll, after this record, I'll play one more record. That will be a midnight record for this and and, and, uh, and, and our pals. Ah, Zeb, I know who. I know exactly what you're talking about. I have the uh, that CD. What? What? 
I still understand, don't understand what the tone poets is. So we skipped through side one and uh, settled, we listened to the whole track three. We had one and there will be one more, Angela. Don't worry. Ranking. Come on, Zay. <laughs> ah, Don Poulen. Yeah. There's literally zero info on how he produced that. He recorded the piano and then computer. The computer in... This was released in 1998. I have no idea what that means and how he used it or treated it. I'll try to figure it out though. And um, the guy is still alive. I have his email. So... Hmm. Well, I didn't know that, but uh, it makes sense in a way. So, and that's a uh, high praise. <laughs> Ah, okay, interesting. Ah, nice. And here's the original test pressing of the original one. <laughs> Yeah, probably on Russell. I, I think it's both. On the first side, it's that's what he was saying on on the on the notes, the approximative translate translation from Italian that um, he's interested in both directions, and uh, the the album reflects both uh, ways. No, it's not. So, um, so I, I assume that some of the music was composed on the computer and played on the piano, and some was recorded in, in, on the piano. And the, the track we played that had these other dubs, um, the last track from the, the, the first side. I think was the other way around. I like this a lot, uh, to be honest. I know it's difficult music, probably some of the most difficult music I play here. This is ace, come on, this is really good. Mm -hmm. 
Cheers, look and feel. See you later. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm doing the same tomorrow actually for my mom. Cutting. Cleva Vud. Ved. Cleva Ved. For Morsan. Du for Papa. Morsan. Ha det bra. Vi görs. Ah, you're getting slowly into it, huh? Very tricky. I'm uh, gonna be finished very soon, Daniel. And, uh, it's only one more track after this one. But if you gotta go, you gotta go. You know, this record, I'll be honest. Three, four, five years ago, I would probably not have been ready for it. And I got it because I felt now I, I think I'm ready for it. And it turns out I am. Because, you know, some will hear this and think, oh, it's interesting. But I'm good having heard it once in my life. And I probably would have felt the same four or five years ago. Probably. Maybe not, but... Um, and now I know exactly where I want to go back on this record which will means that I will go also investigate the rest of the record that wasn't as striking to me instantly and uh, there's a puzzle behind uh, the music there which is always uh, an added bonus for me so yeah I must say that at first I was like hmm this is difficult but now no this is uh, this is really 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 good. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Most indeed, Ryan. Putain. What do you mean, even for you, huh? Hierarchies, huh? So everyone, thank you for stopping by tonight. I hope you, um, this was uh, fun, challenging, that you, you found some things that sparked an interest and maybe that uh, you will be seeking out for yourself. And um, yeah, it ended up going quite fast for me. <laughs> I thought I was not going to be able to carry the whole usual length. Uh, I have a lot of work that was waiting for me with the repairing the shelves, putting the records back and a long day tomorrow, but um, I'm glad uh, yeah, we could do this tonight. And I'm leaving you with Beton Kust and Palm Bowman 2, the mini album Hotel Breukelen. Very, very good, like minimal synth. I don't even know how to qualify this. This is electronic music, but it is a little bit of poppy. It's from probably like eight, nine years ago, something like that.
I would say eight years ago. It's really good tune and a six track EP mini album. Really good. So I, I hope, um, yeah, I hope this was good. If you're watching this live, <laughs> like uh, the video if uh, if you like the video. If you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, tomorrow or in a hundred years, like the video and leave a comment if you want me to respond to you. Especially if you want me to respond to you in a hundred years. And if you want to support this, that um, it's easier to get uh, the small records to introduce to you and uh, possible sometimes to get the impossible to get records. Consider supporting the channel by leaving a, a little tip or a big tip if you want in the coffee jar in the description, the first link in the description of the video. So thank you all and uh, I wish you a good night and I'll see you hopefully next week. And yeah, I have quickly just to to thank um, Bat, John, Frank, Sean, Dobbs, Thomas, and Ryan tonight for uh, leaving uh, very nice tips to the stream. And I'm <laughs> just sorry, I said goodbye, but I'm just gonna address the latest comments. Yeah, you welcome this. Always share. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know there was a confirmation, but I'm I'm welcoming it. Je t'en prie, Bat. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Give me with your like. Let's talk one final time and uh, yeah. Thanks. Hello and good night, Paddy. You're welcome. Exactly. There's also, yeah, that, that is quite part of the charm as well. Bonne nuit, Calum. Bye bye. Bye, everyone.